it's a good trade. I would um, like to see more people get into it. Mm -hmm. There is, I think the last count, there was under 7,000 shoe repair people in the United States. Oh. And now between here and the Canadian border, there is only one other shop. You know, and he's in Duluth, so he's quite busy just um, servicing the people in Duluth and Superior. You know, it's an industry or it's a trade that people could get into. You can start with lesser machinery and always move mm -hmm. up. And it's a business where you, you control it. You can control the hours you want to work. Interesting industry. There's always new ideas and new, new ways you have to come up with to make things work. And that challenge alone gets you here every day and guides you to keep protecting yourself to be better. This is more like an anchor for a downtown area. And once you get stores in that do repair work, be it a tailor, a shoe repairman, or a mechanic, the other businesses build off of those also because when you come in to get something done at your store, they're going to another store there too. So you're thinking about 1936 that opened with your grandfather. And we're trying to figure out what we bought from my dad. And we figure it was like 25 years ago. And how long did your dad own it then? Well, actually, not all that long because it took him so long to get buy it from my grandpa. <laughs> so it's um, handed down kind of, and it's like we we bought um, we bought from my folks. So your grandpa started with saddles, you said, like repairing saddles, or what did he do? Right. saddles repairing. Wow. It, and it seemed to me, my like dad told me, and at the time, I think there were like six shoe repair shops at the time back during the day that Grandpa's, you know, expanded into shoe repair. What is it about when times get tough that people start coming here more? What? Why? Well, I just, they figure they'd rather spend $10 on getting their shoes fixed than going out and even buying $30 shoes or higher. You know, in a lot of cases I don't recommend them be getting fixed, but people are insistent. And that's probably what you repair. You get to talk to a lot of interesting people. You'd be surprised at the people that come in here. We had a guy come in here probably almost 10 years ago now that was a multi-billionaire in the uh, chemical business and everything and he just stopped in to see what shoe repairing was about. I thought, I thought that was pretty cool that somebody like that would come in that showed enough interest in something as simple as shoe repairing to see what he could do to relate or what we were doing, just see what lifestyle differences were. Mm -hmm.